Hello everybody, sorry David and I were just having a conversation because he was uh, waving at the screen but he was actually just trying to remove a spider web which would have obscured your view of the hippopotami here at Bivazuk Dam. Now I've come to Bivazuk Dam not so much to see these hippo because I feel like we've sort of done these hippo to death over the last few days but because <laughs> there were reports of course from Herberto yesterday and uh, David reminded me of these, of a mating pair of leopards, well, the tracks anyway, around this area. And so it's worth us coming around, seeing if we can hear the terrifying sound of uh, leopards in flagrante delicto. But I hear nothing like that. I hear just the sweet trilling noises of robins in the distance. A couple of canaries. And a few, what else? A couple of three-banded plovers. Now, there is a three-banded plover on the ground there. That is the three-banded plover. Now, there are alarm-calling impala down to the south of the reserve, which was of course nowhere near where we are, and uh, they're going to just check if Sh Shongile isn't in that area, so just in case they don't find her, I thought I must just give you that update. So it looks like she is around. David, quickly, there's a huge amount of action going on. A hippo just stuck its back out of the water. Yo. Do people say this in other parts of the world? Do people go, shh? Was it a South African thing? Shoo! What a lot of action. It means, my goodness, good gracious me. Ah, now, there has been, I've, uh, well, there have been reports of mating hippopotami in this dam. And certainly that might be what's going on here. But you know, it's very difficult to tell, of course on account of them being under the water. And also very difficult to tell who's male and who's female. And I think that one, the male, if it is a male behind there, is just a little bit nervous. And Jamie yesterday called a terrapin a hippo, and I thought that was quite funny. But if you can see how that mistake was made, if you go up to the one behind there and you just see that little bit of something sticking up and the light is reflecting off the surface of the water, it's very easy to call a hippopotamus a terrapin or indeed a crocodile. I'm just going to quickly scan the shores of the dam and then we're going to move on. I don't see the lipids. And as Jamie has just pointed out, and she's absolutely correct, and I mean, this is the least of the, mis mis uh, can <laughs> the misinformation I've given. She said, I once called a hippo skull, at least a warthog skull, a hippo skull. I absolutely did. It was one of the more embarrassing moments of my life. Um, and it was, you know, we try not to embarrass each other. Well, sort of. And uh, Brent was left with no option but to embarrass me live because it was such a ridiculous untruth that I had told by mistake that he was left with no option but to correct me. So yes, she makes a very good point there. Um, you know, David, as the old saying goes, I think it was, um, I think it may have been uh, the good Lord himself who said this. He said, uh, you know, judge not the speck in someone else's eye when you have a plank in your own. Yes. And there is a large plank in my eye. <laughs>